speaker meeting. Our speaker will share his experience, strength, and hope for approximately 45 minutes. We ask out of respect for our speaker to please remain seated until he has finished. And this guy, you know, this guy carried the message to me when I was struggling hard out down to Phoenix, like negative 2,000 days. And uh, um, so it's my pleasure to introduce Tate. Hi everybody, I'm an alcoholic, my name's Tate. Uh, I've been clean and sober since April 13th, 2005. I haven't found it necessary doing kind of narcotic or a drop of alcohol since that day because of rooms like this, people like you, 12 steps and sponsorship and a home group. And uh, I have a God in my life today as a result of the actions of those 12 steps. I wanna thank John for inviting me down, or up rather. We're coming up from the valley. Um, it's cooler up here. I like it. Uh, it's cool, man, talking to some of you before the meeting. I know I'm in the right place. I want to welcome all the newcomers. Guys, uh, for the first 30 days, anybody new, first time in Alcoholics Anonymous, it's a privilege for me to be here to be able to share with you about something that has saved my life, that has given me a life, has given me purpose. Oh my gosh, uh, what a treat uh, for me to be able to uh, share myself with you this evening. And uh, Happy birthday on a year today. That's great. Uh, one year on the 25th, uh, from my understanding. Is that right? Congratulations on that. Keep trudging. Um, and um, I want to thank the, the, uh, the individuals that came up with me, who know my story, who we spend time with uh, weekly, daily, uh, and they came up anyway. Uh, <laughs> They took the time, the effort, you know, to come up because that's what this thing is, willing to go to any length, right? Um, you know, I don't know where you landed uh, to get yourself here. I know where I came from, and I know what this means to me today. This is life and death still, right? What I have is a deadly disease. I have alcoholism, and I didn't know that um, for the longest time. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I started getting loaded at 14. I uh, started drinking at 14, you know, and... Uh, Grew up in Oklahoma, and I couldn't wait to leave there. So I, I, uh, I, I fell in love with it because I didn't have any fear when I was intoxicated. Uh, the fear was gone, and it didn't matter. And I love the effect that it produced within me, and that's why I continued to do it. Was the effect, and um, you know, uh, I had opportunities in life and and so forth, and I just messed them all up. Uh, drinking and drugging were, were far more a priority in my life than the responsibilities. Uh, I didn't know about responsibilities, you know. My, my family, there's alcoholism in certain places of it, but my folks didn't, uh, you know, they had the, you know, the celebratory uh, New Year's or something like that, but it never got crazy or out of hand. And anyway, I 14, you know, I was like, man, I made a goal. Let's see how many days in a row I can go get messed up on something. And, uh, and that was like a legitimate goal, right? Um, by the time, okay, so I am 49 years old now. Um, uh, let's see, I was 32 when I surrendered. And um, at the point of surrender in my life, uh, I certainly wouldn't wish the previous four years on any human being. Uh, and if you know what that feels like, welcome. Um, man, uh, I was just trying not to drink, you know, I was seeing how many days I could go not, not getting loaded, but it was more like four hours and I'd have a seizure. Uh, the disease of alcoholism is progressive. I know what it's like for tomorrow to hurt, right? Physically, right? Tomorrow's gonna hurt, so I'm gonna postpone tomorrow, right? I engage, they, they talk about this thing in the big book, the, uh, the allergic reaction. So today when I, sit, when I get up here and I say, hey, I'm an alcoholic, okay? I'm admitting that I am bodily and mentally different from my fellows. Right? I'm admitting that my body experiences an allergic reaction to alcohol. When I put one of something in my system, uh, particularly alcohol and other things, my, my story is, is laden with uh, various uh, other things too, um, but uh, it started with alcohol and it ended with alcohol. You know, And I had my seasons and preferences and concoctions and all of that, but it was all an attempt um, you know, to change uh, changed the way I felt and the circumstances that were going on that I didn't know how to deal with because I was a scared little boy, you know. And uh, I landed in Alcoholics Anonymous at the age of 32 and I was that same scared little boy. And I am so grateful for the long timers in Alcoholics Anonymous. I am so grateful for the solution and the people that are present daily showing me, they showed me how to do this thing one day at a time. And today it's still that simple, you know. It's still that simple. So. Um, 
man, I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of fun, sure. Um, you know, the effect uh, was exhilarating. It was enhancing what life was, and at some point it just became the most important thing. I just had to have it, and I would, uh, I would do things that I wouldn't normally do, you know, the morals, the ethics that I had, it went out the window uh, when it came to getting what I needed. And uh, I became very um, unpredictable. Uh, I don't know if you can relate to that. Um, a lot of things would happen. A lot of people said, stay away. Um, and that, that was kind of a series of things. And they, it was always their fault. It was never my fault, you know. And I was good with that because I could have my best friend, you know, the bottle. And I drank round the clock. I mean, it'd be like, Sun up, sun down, I didn't know. Whatever conscious moment I had was consumed with drinking. It, and uh, I slept in a cemetery two miles away from an off-ramp, um, a series of events because I tried a lot of geographics. I, I, I don't like to, uh, you know, be accountable for what I do. Uh, today is different because of the so solution that I've learned here. But prior, man, I'd blame everything and everybody, and I'm a coward, and I'd split. You know, or I would attack you. And I got a lot of stories on that, and it just never ended good, and it was childish. And, and uh, what's been interesting about um, recovery, um, having a program, having a sponsor, having a home group, and being committed and accountable in that home group and to that sponsor, um, is that I'm able to identify certain parts of those defects of character that can continue to show themselves as I am no longer engaged in the drink or the drug. And that's more the issue, right? That's those things that like, okay, first and foremost, you put it down. That's important because it's killing me. It's killing me, right? I'm sleeping in this cemetery. My, my world was so small. It was a little triangle. And it's even if I made it there. And I'm smart, right? Or so I think. But cops wouldn't come in, get me out of there. You know, it was, uh, eh, it was a place, but it didn't matter where I went. I hated who I was. I hated you. I didn't know how to talk to people. I was a creature. And then I'd be lit at the bus stop, and I'd tell you that I, me and Brad Pitt are going to be in a movie next week. Yeah, he's my friend. You got a cigarette? You know, uh, um, you know just, just you know, lying about the lie you lied about to lie. And it's just sneaky. Just, I was, prior to all that stuff, just sneaky, deceitful. You know what I mean? A lot of hidden agendas, right? And I uh, always had a back door. Oh, if this happens, well, I'm doing this. I think even at one point I was like, man, if, I, if, I, if it gets so bad, I mean, probably in my 20s. I started having night sweats early 20s, you know. I got real familiar with that. And uh, I, I remember telling myself, I was like, I'm going to be a truck driver. <laughs> and no offense to any truck drivers, right? I don't know what that means. But uh, if, if things get really bad, I'm going to be a truck driver or I'm going to join the Hare Krishnas, right? I figured that'd be kind of an easy skate, you know. Uh, but by the time, I mean, I couldn't move, right? By the time that point came... I could not go anywhere, and my, I would come to, and I would uh, peel the face off whatever surface I had crashed on and passed out on, and I'd have a lot of fear, and I'd say, oh my God, I can't believe this is your life, Tate. You know, I didn't know how to talk to anybody about what was going on with me. There wasn't, there wasn't people who could relate to that. So, um, yeah, man, I had to do it. You know, I know what it's like to stand in front of a liquor store window at 3 in the morning with a rock in my hand debating, can I smash the window and grab that bottle right there? and run before the cops get here. Because I don't need the whole store. I just need that one fucking drink. You know what I mean? I need it, OK? I drank mouthwash. I drank extract. Uh, I'd go in on some days to the stores, and they'd be looking at me. I knew it, right? I mean, that paranoia goes with it. And uh, I'd go to the extract aisle, and I'd down myself a little bit of that, keep the shakes off, you know? And I lived that way. And nobody wanted nothing to do with me. I was a mooch. I was a leech. I was a. I was just a, a pimple on the ass of the world, you know? <laughs> and that's me. That's me. So the miracle tonight is that today I did not wake up with the obsession. You know what I mean? And that has been removed through the actions of the 12 steps, through the actions that I've learned in Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, I knew John. I met John in Phoenix when we had, I had about 60 days. We were in the same halfway house, right? So, so from the cemetery, I got arrested again for public drunk, and I said, screw California. I was in California. Whatever. I was invading the law. I had a lot of shit after me. But uh, got arrested again, and then uh, I was going to go to the East Coast because I know how to disappear, and I made it to East Mesa. And uh, 
was doing the same stuff, man. It's just small and horrible, you know, and a series of events and people were put in my life that I know today are a power greater than myself, active in human form, which I believe is what this room is full of, right? Um, I never saw it that way before, but today I know that to be true. And uh, I got to a detox and I went through the process, man. And, uh, and I just didn't want to live that way anymore, you know. There was something in there where I, people came in and they brought a meeting and I listened and I identified and I wanted it. I wanted it. I wanted it. I didn't want to be that guy anymore. I didn't want to live that way. I couldn't, you know. And as a result, I said, okay, this is what you do. And I said, okay. I had no reservations. I had no fight in me. It was all gone. And I did what they told me to do. And I still do that. And I got 17 years, right? And I got a long way to go, okay? My sobriety is fragile to me. I have to guard it by coming to places like this. I have to guard it with service work. I have to guard it with prayer. I have to guard it with transparency. I have to guard it with working with others because it's, uh, it's so fragile, man. I did a 12-step call on a guy today. Uh, and he was, he was a toothpick, man. He's shaking. He, I, it's like, and the funny thing is, not the funny thing, I mean, I get it. It's like he's dying, right? And he, he don't look good. And for whatever reason, he calls me, so you know that's bad. And uh, I was like, you must be really sick if you're calling me. And, uh, and so I, I met with him. Um, and uh, I was like, all right, let's, let's I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? This is a deadly disease. If you want it, there are actions to take to change, 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 change continuously change the person I was to the person I am today moving forward because the man I was will drink again. See? Grab that for a minute and ponder it. The person I was will drink again. What am I doing today to not be that same person I was? And there are so many of those levels of behavior and habits and reaction that are ingrained in that stuff. Now, I didn't know squat about that. I was just not wanting to shit my pants when I landed here, right? Because that was a common occurrence for a guy like me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't yet, thank goodness. Hey, uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, uh, man, um, my ki I got a kid. He shits his pants, you know. Uh, actually, he does it in the backyard, too. <laughs> He comes in naked. He's seven now, you know. <laughs> he comes in naked. I'm like, okay, you know. I don't yell at him. I clean it up and, you know, nothing more. Well, never mind. I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like I got identity, you know, something like that. Uh, and uh, so for me, I landed um, in a home group. I landed in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I wanted it more than anything in the world, and I was willing to do it, man. And that's really that simple. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a proven recipe. These 12 steps are a proven recipe that have worked for millions of people all over the world uh, who have an allergic reaction, who have that same allergic phenomena that takes place. And, um, you know, uh, I'm grateful for the people that uh, put up with me early on who were patient and tolerant and, and said, come along when nobody wanted nothing to do with me. And, uh, and they showed me how to do this thing one day at a time, and they're still in my life. And uh, my goodness, it's like, what has transpired from then to now? A whole lot. Uh, I think one of my favorite lines in the big book is on page 20. It says, our very lives as ex-problem drinkers depend upon our constant thought of others and how we may help meet their needs. Um, because I am a selfish, self-centered human being. And what this whole thing is, is talked about, right, is this process is that as I, as I do this third step and I turn my will and my life over, okay, I am no longer, my life is no longer my business, right? My life is no longer my business. I have a new employer and I turn myself over to that employer and there's a contract, there's a grant with the third step. Now, how do you know someone's done a third step? Well, they finish the remainder of the steps, right? They get all the way through to 12, right? And by that point, you know, it guarantees a spiritual awakening. And so my experience is coming in here. Now, I did a lot of mushrooms and stuff at one point, so I knew there was something, you know. Uh, but as far as, like, a power greater than myself, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going in for the holy water or whatnot. Uh, and today I know that, hey, this is, this is holy water, and uh, I'm in church right now with all of you, you know, because you understand that. And, and today we got a shot together. Uh, by myself, it's only a matter of time before I convince myself it's okay to pick up a drink or what have you. You know what I mean? So I've stayed plugged in. I've stayed involved in the process 
of Recovery in Alcoholics Anonymous. And what has happened is putting that in the center of my life and making that the center of my life, all sorts of amazing things have happened that I never, I, I, I can't explain it. I, some of the stuff I cannot explain. And I can only attribute it to a power greater than myself working in my life today. You know, and I know that to be true for me. And since I'm the guy sharing, hey, that's what I'm saying, you know? <laughs> so like, relationships with family members, they didn't want squat to do with me. It took them a long time to even let me back in the house. And they were still, you know, like, is he gonna steal stuff and things like that, you know? But today, I mean, um, I appreciate them. I listen to them. Um, I act in service to them. I learned all that stuff here. You know, it was weird early on going and being around them. Um, which wasn't a whole lot because I just stayed plugged in Alcoholics Anonymous and uh, being a service man, working with guys, uh, doing H&I, um, being involved in the meeting. That's an important thing, to have a commitment to be involved, right? It gives you something to do, somewhere to be, helps you to feel part of. And as an alcoholic, I feel part from, see? That's like, I, I, I'm part from, but when I drink, I'm part of, right? <laughs> But then it's like, how do you take the action to feel that part of when you don't have that magic elixir that's poison and will kill me? Eh. You join in service in Alcoholics Anonymous, and there's so much to do. There's all kinds of things going on. And, uh, and just get busy. You know, My sponsor says, if, uh, if you're bored in Alcoholics Anonymous, you're an asshole. <laughs> and I think that's funny, right? Because there's so much to do. It's like, how willing am I to get involved and do something? You know? And he's... Uh, He's a character and he knows everything about me. And I know this, if you don't trust your sponsor, if you can't share absolutely everything of who you are with your sponsor, get a new one, okay? This is life and death. We are as sick as our secrets and I have no secrets today. There you go. I can tell you anything, right, about who I am. And I am accountable at every point in my day, at every point in the week, I'm accountable, right? I have to be because I'm a sneaky, selfish human being. And part of that is, um, it just, it makes it, look, I tell you this, I love being clean and sober today. I love being clean and sober, you know. I love the life of um, what, what, this is, what this program has done for me. And there's guys, like I said, these guys, shoot, man. Uh, there's guys in this room that, uh, that I saw when they landed. And, I'm, and going back to John again, yeah, like, he went flip-flopping in and out, man. Like, I remember... Uh, the day you said, I'm going to drink today, you, had a, you were a cab driver at that time. He was a drunken cab driver. <laughs> he fucking drunk and drove people drunk all the time until he, got, he lost his license or whatever. And, uh, and he's like, I'm going to drink today. And I'm like, no, man, I, uh, no, you don't have to, man. You know, and I tried to, I gave, it, I gave it my all that day. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and I learned something very valuable that day, that I am... I'm powerless over the disease of alcoholism in other people. I'm powerless over the disease of myself. I, could, I don't keep myself sober. I'm not sober today by myself. I'll tell you that much. I'm relying on something greater. And I have a routine that I do every morning. I, I, do, I do a prayer and meditation. I get connected to a power greater than myself. It helps to center me and allow me to realize that, A, I'm not the center of the universe, and that the only reason I'm here is to be of service to God's kids, right? And last time I checked, God doesn't have any grandkids, you know? So then it's whoever is put in my path that day from the responsibilities I've agreed to, the things that I've said yes to, to handle that, to shoulder that, and see it all the way through. Um, yeah, we got, uh, you know, I mean, I could spare a lot of details of, like, the things we do throughout the week and, and how we're involved in each other's lives uh, uh, in our home group and, and in Alcoholics Anonymous. And, um, you know, but if you really want to know how good your program is, ask your wife. You know, ask your family at home. That's the true testament of these principles and all our affairs of how good your program really is, you know? And I've learned that from the long timers here, you know? How are you treating the people that are around you? Are you, you have that, you can, you know, you can uh, shoot, man, you know, spend hours and hours with a newcomer trying to convince him that he can stay sober too in a day. Uh, but how are you treating your wife? How are you treating your kids, you know? Um, not everybody has, uh, uh, I, I'm married today, okay? Um, I got married um, seven years, uh, clean and sober. Met a woman, and uh, yeah, she knows everything about me and still loves me. You know, uh, she supports my recovery. Um, she, uh, I, I think she's beautiful. She's amazing, 
And um, I know today that uh, it's by something greater that we're together. And we, we have a kid. We've got a little guy, a little seven-year-old. So there have been these series of things and responsibilities that I've had to shift and change and be flexible with and take these principles to heart and apply in my life. And uh, I take that stuff pretty seriously, but I have a lot of fun. And I um, had a stepdaughter, experienced that whole process too. And I learned from the people in the rooms on how to uh, handle that relationship with grace, you know, talking to other people in the room. So what's cool about it is that um, everything is a 12-step experience waiting to be shared as long as you stay sober through it. And uh, pretty much anything that I could go through, I'm sure there's somebody in this room who's gone through it already. And if I'm willing to reach out and ask for help and learn from that experience, I don't have to go through as much pain. And that's what I try to do for the guys I sponsor. But I don't have any uh, attachment to the outcome of their journey. You know, I mean, that was prevalent when I tried to save John that day, you know, and just let go. And then we keep seeing him. We go to H&I panels. We're very active. And so, so we're in detoxes and carrying the message and stuff like that. And, and it's a cool thing because it gets, you, you get a chance to know the people that are, that are in your group. You get to build relationships that way as well as uh, engage in the 12th step, you know, and there's a debt there that I can't possibly pay back as long as I live. So if a guy calls me today and he says he wants to go to detox, halt the presses, man. And, and there's a lot going on in my life, but that's fine because that's the most important thing. Because here's this human being who's coming up for air for a moment. Maybe the sun can shine and maybe the sun can last. I don't know, but for whatever reason, you know, I can be a vessel for a moment without even really being a vessel. You know what I mean? I'm not thinking I'm a vessel. I'm just Tate. And there's this dude calling me, and it's like, how do people know each other and all that, the weaver of the winds, and it's pretty cosmic stuff. But, uh, but we'd see John like, God, man, for like three, four years in detoxes, and he'd see us coming, and he'd be like, oh, shit, these guys again, you know? <laughs> and you're like, where you been? He's like, ah, sleeping by a dumpster. And he's like, yeah. you know? And, uh, and it's cool because I'll tell you this, man, uh, the relationship I have with John is sacred to me because there's a, there's a point of connection that we had early on, and for whatever reason, um, here we are today. And we've maintained that friendship, we've maintained that connection, and we understand that it's based on the, the premise of sobriety being first and foremost. You know what I mean? Um, and there's a, a really unique, sacred thing with that that a guy like me never had before I got here. But you can only have that over the course of time, you know? So it's like I encourage everybody to keep trudging today, keep trudging tomorrow, you know, and keep going. If you're going through something, dude, get out of your head. D do something, like, like uh, sweep the floor, do some dishes, you know, take some action, right? It'll change the thought. The other thing about the disease that I have that it talks about in the book um, is uh, it centers in my mind, right? And they can talk about the obsession. You can talk about things like that, but it's like how, how do I react to the external world going on around me? And, and before I got here, it was childish. And then after I got here, it was childish. <laughs> My reaction to life was infantile. And there are certain days where my reaction eh, is more like a teenager, you know? And then there's sometimes where it's actually uh, mature, surprisingly. And, and it wasn't like I set out to be mature, you know? Um, and I don't think I'm mature. I just know that I pay my bills, right? If, uh, if I say yes to something, I do it. I'm there. Um, I'm transparent with other people. It's weird, like showing up to work uh, and, you know, Monday through Friday and doing the best you can, like I was taught here. Don't steal time, don't steal pencils. You know, you work for your life. You, part of that seventh tradition ties into the, to the seventh step. Quit being a mooch, quit being a bum, get a job, get to work, start supporting yourself, and then pay all the money back that you owed, right? And so I'm grateful for my sponsor who cares more about my life than my feelings, right? And so I started to, do, I just, just started to do those simple things that people have been doing all over the world all the time, going through hardships and challenges and, uh, and taking care of business, you know what I mean? And uh, that's what I do, and I don't make a big stink about it. I just am grateful for, uh, you know, a lot of stuff and try to show that through my actions because I, I know that today gratitude's an action word. So to be able to come up to Prescott and share with you all a little bit, um, is a uh, an absolute privilege. You know what I mean? Um, if you're if you're shaking, you you don't think you can do it. I know you can, um, but it doesn't matter if I know you can. What matters is, uh, are you willing to reach out and ask for help? And are you willing to take that help? You know, there's a lot of people who've been in that situation that are in this room, the exact same situation as you. You know, and uh, 
And you can ask them. They've gone through it. You can ask them, you know. And if anybody is uh, dedicated to this program, they're willing to take the time and give you a solution. Now, sometimes those solutions you might not want to hear, right? There's some, sometimes those solutions I don't want to hear. It's like, what I got to do? I got to get out of myself, you know? I got to get out of myself, um, which is really what the whole thing is all about. And seeing where you can contribute and put into the stream of life, you know, how can you? So one thing I've learned about program and recovery is that everywhere I go, I see what I can do to, to contribute, to put something in, because I was a taker everywhere I went, you know. I pay my own way, you know. That's another thing. Um, I, uh, it took me four years to pay off all my financial amends. I didn't, uh, I was living in a halfway house. I was sledgehammering. I'd walk. <laughs> I'd, I'd get up in the morning at four. I'd walk an hour to sign in to day labor. I'd go sledgehammer concrete and dig ditches for eight hours. I'd get 38.05, and I'd walk back an hour, and I'd give them my money, and I'd get me a pouch of tobacco, and I would uh, walk to a meeting, and I'd walk home. And then, so I do that every day, every day, every day, every day. And, because uh, there was something here that, that was attractive to me. There was something here that was attractive to me. From where I was, I believe, right? And so I'm in, and, and then I started to meet people and talk to people, and I got a sponsor right away. And he said, okay, do this, read this, work here, be here, do this. I said, okay. And it just, a series of things started to unfold in my life in a way that I couldn't have planned, but I contribute to something beyond me, uh, knowing darn good and well what my primary purpose is today. You know what I mean? And uh, the other factor, I'm kind of skipping around a lot of different places, but it's a, it's a cool gig to be able to share with you all. I'm, I'm having a good time. And... Uh, um, treating other people as you want to be treated. Golden rule right there, you know. And that's a basis and that's a barometer. And uh, can't say I've always done that uh, sober, um, but that's something I shoot for today. That's something I'm aware of, you know. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, so this guy, he, uh, today, he, he had to do something with his car. It's like, dude, I'll take you. You want to get in detail? Your life's on the line. It's life and death. And I'm telling you, it, it is with this guy, you know. And, uh, and he's like, well, but I got to take my car here, and I got to do this with my car. And right there, right there is an indication. It's like, dude, come with me, right? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm a deadbeat, low-life bum who's been saved by a power greater than myself through this process. Come with me. I'll show you. We'll get you somewhere. And he's like, I mean, essentially, he said no, you know? I'm like, okay can't do nothing. So we're here to help the willing, let go of the unwilling, and bury the dead. And there's been a lot of dead that I've seen along the way. This is a deadly disease. And I don't want to be a sad story. You know what I mean? I can still be a sad story. Look, I'll tell you. Uh, my home group was present at my wedding. They helped. I asked for help. They, they were there of service, setting up the wedding. We were, it was all involved, right? Um, my sponsor, who has 36 years, uh, clean and sober, He's a, he's, he's so opposite of me, but I love him dearly. He is so, uh, he's been in my corner ever since I landed here, right? And he and my mom met, at, you know, anyway, he and my mom are Facebook friends, you know, which is, which is weird, you know? And, uh, but that's like a connection of support that's going on in my world, you know? And, um, and that's a cool thing to have. Uh, like I say, no secrets, just full transparency. And uh, a lot of the things that I've learned, um, you know, uh, having a kid and, and what that, in, I, like, you really want to know how selfish you are have a, to have a kid, you know, it's like, wow, you know, I think I'm all golden. Or even, even better, you want to, you, you, you think you're a spiritual giant, well, get in a relationship, you know, and, and let all that stuff come out right away, you know, and, uh, and that's what happens, you know, that's what happens. And there's a lot of things I was celibate, oh, this is messed up, I was celibate for seven years, right? Uh, when I landed here, they said, no relation. After I did my, after I did my uh, fifth step with my sponsor, he's like, you're sick. No relationships for you for a year. <laughs> now, I did not know that he tells everybody that, right? <laughs> but I just took it to heart. And by the time I got to a year clean and sober, I realized what he was talking about. I was like, wow, I really don't know what love is. I used everybody. When it was, I only... I only was there when it was convenient for me. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that's, that's bullshit is what that is. Uh, today I know something different. And uh, 
And I know that love wants what's best for the other person, regardless of oneself, you know. And so, um, yeah, so anyway, I uh, held clear of that for a while and then uh, <laughs> courted this woman, you know, and, uh, and off and running we went. So um, I deal with uh, schools. I deal with, uh, oh, my gosh, man, River. He's such a, he is such a light in my life, and he's such a uh, challenge at times. Um, but I'm learning a lot from it. And the thing about it is, like, even tonight, so uh, my wife, the stepdaughter, is uh, at the school of Washington State. She's in college. She got a full ride. Uh, she's a brilliant, brilliant human being. And uh, it's her birthday today. So uh, my wife flew out there to spend a, a mom-daughter weekend together, you know, and I could, uh, I could be supportive of that. And, and I'm happy for them. Today I'm happy for other people, you know. Uh, I wasn't wasn't like that before, and I don't know where that came about. I think it's just somewhere in the process of moving chairs and making coffee and mopping the floor and shaking hands and passing out literature and doing doing the SRI commitment and and being involved in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. Um, meeting strength in our recovery, and I hear things that I need to hear, you know, and I need to realize that hey, man, this power is way beyond my understanding. And, uh, and I have the ability to connect to it, and I have a responsibility to connect to it on a personal level. And then from there, I need to go out and I need to be a service. And it's not about keeping score. It's not about, oh, there's an outcome that's going to happen from this. It's about doing it for the sake of it, you know. And I've learned that too here. And uh, shoot, man, we got, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I could talk about. We're coming around the band. What are we, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that? Um, <coughs> There's a lot of folks that are in here shaking and new, you know, and uh, early on for me, uh, I, 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 I didn't know how to laugh, right? I wasn't able to laugh. And I remember at like 40 days, I laughed. Something was funny. 40 days sober, I, something, and it was like this belly laugh that was me. And it came out and it scared me because it was, because it was so personal and yet had been absent from my life for so long. And I was like, wow, man, ain't that something? You know, that was an awakening that happened there. And, uh, but early on, I tell you, the best days were the ones where I knew I could put my head on the pillow at night and I didn't pick up a drink or do any dope. You know, and if, and if you're sitting here tonight, and that's the case, if you got the allergy, see, nobody could tell me I had the allergy, even though a lot of people did. <laughs> a lot of people long before I got here told me, hey, buddy, something wrong with you. Uh, but it didn't culminate until I admitted that within myself. I conceded to my innermost self, right, that I have a problem and I need help. And that's a terrifying space for a guy like me to be into, right? That's, that's, that's scary, see? Um, but I, I want to offer you encouragement through that, and I guarantee you that anybody who's got time is, knows exactly what that spot feels like. And that's what this whole thing is, is not... You know, it's not going to pat you on the pooper and say it's all going to be okay because we're dealing with some real heavy shit, but that there is a way out, right? And that's the real truth. There's a way out if you're willing to do it. So, um, you know, if you're shaking or what have you, you know, all I can say is you make it through, put your head on the pillow tonight, clean and sober, you're a winner. Because if you're in this room and you got the allergy, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming a lot, you know, I don't know why everyone's here, right? But uh, what we're up against is far worse than anything out there, you know. And I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to that stuff. And I'm better when I'm with you. And that's what I know. And I'm better when I'm with these guys going down the line. And there's cool things that have happened that I've been able to, to share my experience with other guys that I work with, uh, you know, and, and see them become fathers and husbands, you know, and return back to families and be able to, like, hold a job and, like, gain some personal integrity, you know, to have some confidence, for God's sakes, in something that they can do instead of walking around thinking they're a worthless piece of shit all the time like I used to think, you know, because that's the lie. And my, what's funny about that is, like, it's just pride in reverse. It's just, you know, it's just self-centeredness. <laughs> that's all it is. Just if you think you're that horrible, it's like, dude, quit thinking about yourself. Do something, right? Go clean the toilets, you know, or, 
Or plant a flower. Look, we got sunflowers. I've been planting flowers with my kid, trying to teach him about the cycle of life, you know? Go out there and put the seed in the, in the soil and water it. We, and then there's, there's a, as a result of taking the action and, be, and maintaining something on a daily basis, there's a result. There's a fruitful result, just like recovery, just like program, just by taking that investment, you know? Because it's nobody else's responsibility to keep me sober, see? I am responsible for my own recovery. I am responsible for my own sobriety. So it doesn't matter what, fuck man, it doesn't matter what I want for anybody, you know? It doesn't even matter what I want for myself. What matters is what do you want for yourself, see? Because it's all there, it's all available. That's the cool part, man. And there's a lot of inspirations uh, in my life. There's people, you know, the message comes in all kinds of ways and you hear it when you're open to it, right? For me to think that I've, uh, I don't know, man. What, I, guess, I guess part of the gig is that it's a very simple process. It's a 24-hour process, okay? Um, and it's a very simple solution, you know? It's not complicated. And if you haven't drank or drugged today, you know, you're not going to be any more sober ever, right? It's just maintaining that the, the, as life comes at you. Because life, life will happen, and there's a lot of stuff that happens. And you gotta have something to root on. You gotta have something to be anchored to when the tide is high or it's gonna, those waves are gonna take you out, you know? And I'm grateful for, like I said, uh, my home group and, and my line of sponsorship and how I've been taught, you know? They don't mess around and, uh, and it's good, you know? Um, the book is to be studied. It's, a, uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a novel, you know? It's a textbook, it's a manual, the 12 and 12. Uh, I would encourage to read the 12 and 12 and to study the 12 and 12 as well. Um, if you're wondering, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. It's like I've never been this far along in my journey of sobriety. So where I am now is unexplored territory, you see. Uh, and, uh, and to think that I don't need help would be the same mindset that I had when I landed here or before I landed here. Right? So it's important for a guy like me to stay open and to stay willing uh, to continue to do this stuff. I you know? uh, wound up buying a home. Holy crap, my wife was like pregnant and uh, I was like, huh, maybe we should buy a home. You know? Saved up a little money at that point and, uh, and went through the process. I never bought a house. I don't know what the hell that stuff's about, man. It was foreign. It was weird, you know, but there were other people in my home group that had done it, and they said, well, here, be, be mindful of this and look at this, and, and it turned out to be a good thing, you know. We got a little spot, and, and that's where we live, and uh, paying the mortgage, and uh, it's weird. I got flowers, got sunflowers, you know, and uh, got toilet paper. I mean, lots of times there wasn't much of that. I, I'd use my sock, you know. <laughs> I know, man. I'm a bum. I, you know, and that's why I got identity with John. You know, I'm so grateful that he, he surrendered to this thing. He's a bum, man. And he surrendered. He surrendered and he's dedicated himself to this program, you know. And it's a cool thing that, to see what happens, you know, and uh, what, what can happen in people's lives when you put this thing first and you just surrender to it. And the thing I know about surrender and acceptance, okay, it's not a one-time gig. Those are spiritual muscles. Those are blueprints of spiritual muscles that I have to exercise daily. And the more I exercise the surrender and the acceptance, it becomes smoother next time it comes around. And I react differently to situations in a way that I wasn't trying to. It's just like, you know what? Mountain or a molehill? That's a, that's a molehill. I used to think everything was a mountain. It was so important, so big. And it's just really not. You know, it's really not. And I'll tell you this, one thing I've learned, if it's important, it's not urgent. If it's urgent, it's not important, you know? It's like, okay, slow down a little bit. Um, I go to churches that people invite me to and I listen for a message of a power greater than myself. Um, but I consider myself more so home at church in here or out in nature, uh, being with my kid, raising him has been a hoot. Um, I remember when, uh, Man, when my wife had the kid, seeing him come through, if anybody, I'd like, have you ever seen that? Some of you, I'm sure, have, have witnessed birth, right? And it's miraculous. I'd never seen that. And I was like, for a minute, I was watching it like I was on a, I was like, huh, I've never seen this. 
you know? Like it was like, I remember seeing the movie in like sixth grade or something, you know, the birth movie. And, uh, but I was never present, so it was neat. So I was like this distant observer. And then it, then it came out and I was like, wow, man. And then I was like, whoa, that's, and then it dawned on me that that's my son. And the only thing the nurse said later on is that I was crying and said I used to live, she said, you were crying and just kept saying you used to live under a bridge. <laughs> And right before that, my sponsor was there to support me because he knew how nervous and freaked out I was. And we're sitting in the room and he was like, hey, when's, where's this, where are you going to have the baby at? And then they brought these stirrups in and they said, right here. And she, he, he was like, oh, shit, man, he got up and left, you know. But I've had support for all these things along the way. And every time there's been an opportunity that's presented itself to me on as a crossroads, I've always communicated with my sponsor of what's going on. What's going on? Because I need another perspective because I'm delusional even here and now. See, I have alcoholism. I'm delusional. And uh, so I need that other perspective. I need people who know me, who understand my strengths and my weaknesses. Because sometimes here's the gig, man. My sponsor, everybody around me is like, you can do that. You should do that. And my sponsor's like, uh, I don't think that's a good idea for you right now. So I don't do it. And the same goes the other way, is that sometimes the guys around me are like, man, you shouldn't do that. And my sponsor's like, no, I think that'd be a good thing for you. You should do that. And I take the action, and after the fact, I see that power working all the way through. But see, I'm, I'm <laughs> driven by 100 forms of fear, right? And the key is to kick fear in the dick, right? Because <laughs> fear and faith cannot exist simultaneously. Either I'm coming from one or I'm coming from the other. Either I'm trusting in that power and moving with it and taking action, or I'm not. And uh, stagnation is death. Stagnation is painful, you know, and you don't have to be that person. One thing I love about the nine step promises that we read is that it leads right in to the tenth step and the tenth step promises. And what does it talk about? You know, they will always materialize if we work for them. And then it says, this thought brings us to step 10. So we have to continue, I've been taught to continue doing the writing, taking the inventory on the resentments and the fears that I experience, and share that with my sponsor to identify my part and what I'm doing to block myself from that power. So it's a continual process. I don't have to go back and do another fourth step necessarily, but I do issues one at a time when they come up today, right now. And as a result of that, I can be free of that funk that lands up in here and causes me to not be connected to you as deeply, you know, and to not be connected to the loved ones in my life as deeply. And then I can just take that stuff and throw it away and like, you know, enjoy, right? To enjoy what that power is doing. And um, yeah, I don't know, it's been a privilege. Uh, I think I'm kind of right there, aren't I? About wrapping it up, you know, ain't no magic thing other than the fact that being here tonight guarantees uh, that I got a shot against the disease to stay clean and sober today. And by continuing to take those actions, bless you, like those folks ahead of me showed me, uh, so far it's worked, man, you know? And uh, I appreciate your time and attention, um, strength to your struggles, love to your heart, and I'll pass.